Welcome back to Squawk Box this morning. Uh, news breaking late yesterday afternoon. J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon undergoing emergency heart surgery. He is said to be awake and alert, recovering well. And of course, we wish him well. I uh, want to bring in someone who knows him well. Joining us right now is Jeff Sonnenfeld, Senior Associate Dean for Leadership Studies at Yale School of Management, also a CNBC contributor. Uh, it was a surprise, uh, obviously. Uh, the good news, of course, for Jamie was that uh, he woke up, uh, went to the hospital on his own, and um, as we said, uh, appears to be uh, on the mend, Jeff. Uh, but of course, now uh, questions about uh, who's going to ultimately run this firm uh, during this period and who's going to run this firm in the future. No, I think you're right. I'm, I'm so glad we're, we're taking a look at, at celebrating uh, Jamie right now. It, uh, as Becky had said earlier this morning, how fantastic it was that he knows his body so well that he saw some telltale signs of distress and took himself right into the hospital for early treatment of this sort of uh, aorta uh, dissection apparently is, is the make or break. Uh, and the, the early treatment was so important. Uh, but, but, Andrew, as you know, having really studied this financial industry so well and seen it through crises, there's nobody like him out there. Right. Uh, sure, Steve Schwarzman or um, Warren Buffett or Bill Gates are, are great overarching visionaries, but uh, Jamie Dimon is absolutely the J.P. Morgan of this millennium. There's uh, uh, Joe used to work at E.F. Hutton. When they don't add the E.F. Hutton ad, when E.F. Hutton speaks, everybody listens. That's the way it is when Jamie speaks. He can articulate the most complex issues in, in, in direct, eloquent ways that we all can understand. Policy options is brilliant. And what he's detected his own business, not just the, the global economy, he's built very strong bench strength repeatedly. As you know, his, his progeny that's gone off to lead uh, uh, Barclays and uh, Carlisle and, and Wells Fargo and things, it's remarkable. So I think that the two that apparently lined up and are, are certainly there in a custodial way right now, seeing things through, are also ready should there be a more formal succession. I think that Daniel Pinto... Is, is superb. I, I know Gordon Smith much better. And Gordon Smith is, is just as eloquent as, and witty as Jamie and a very, very well experienced. Both of them are quite experienced in different parts of, of, of the entire institution. Yeah, you can, you, you look, if you've talked to Jamie and you know him, it's like, I don't think he, there's never any downtime for his mind, ever. Right. Like you would never have crickets. He's all, and, and you know what he's thinking about a lot of the time is, is risks in the world and how you run the business. And but I was going to say, he's also the most detailed person I right. know. Right. But do you think he ever is not thinking 30, about... 30,000 feet, but he can talk. He cares about, you know, right. what's happening at some branch, right. uh, you know, on, on 72nd Street and Broadway. He I mean, uses, that's to me what's amazing about uses a lot the way he operates. This is, this people this use 10% of their brain. Of, he's using like 80%, I think, if normal people this is a great strength, say, of Jack Welch, who uh, we, we sadly right. uh, had yesterday, his service yeah. yesterday, is that Jack could go macro, micro, macro, micro, up and back. Jamie has that great mind, too, right. to vacillate up and back between detail and big picture, which is really remarkable, though, that he's been through these crises repeatedly. In 1998, before he was a, an official CEO, he's the guy who pulled Wall Street together for the aftermath of long-term uh, long -term, uh, financial crisis, long-term capital crisis. He pulled them together. It wasn't any of the other titans of Wall Street. Similarly, in 2007, when, uh, when the Federal Reserve under, under Alan Greenspan was mocking Jamie, he saw the mispriced risk issues in a very global way. And he told everybody, we're spending our summer vacation over pizza boxes, unwinding uh, leverage in our balance sheet. And that's why J.P. Morgan was in the best situation going into the right. crisis a and, year, year and a and, half later. And by the way, a very calming voice. You always feel, feel like things are under control when Jamie starts to tell you, yeah, here's what we're seeing, but here's how we're planning for it on any different way. So uh, yeah, as even somebody when you're who hears exactly from right. all kinds of people, you just feel like he's always got it under control. When, when he had the London whale crisis in 2012, I believe that was, you, you're right, Becky, he was his own harshest critic. It yeah. was so reassuring that when he went before se Senate testimony, the Senate kept asking him for advice on, 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 on government finances rather than anybody beating up on him. He's so calming, so thorough. Yep. So, uh, there was one point where, where Ken Lewis was testifying over the financial crisis. He was at Bank of America. And Congresswoman Maxine Waters, as the chair of the committee, uh, didn't state something too clearly. And, and Ken kind of made fun of her, kind of winning the battle, losing the war. Jamie took over right afterwards and said, Congresswoman, I think, uh, putting it in our language, and he phrased her question much better to be a profound question. And he said, if you hold us up to that yardstick, 
we're not doing so well. We ourselves at J.P. Morgan Chase, and he won everybody over. And that's uh, nobody. I don't know anybody that, else that. What's can that quite, Ray? What's that Ray Dalio, one of his tenants, about? You, you got to be so obnoxious telling people the truth that you know it's like what's it called? Sorry, it's you know, a, it's something a tenant, tenant you take something, to heart. Something about radical trans. What is it? It's radical. A, well, he's screwed about ra radical transparency. Yeah, radical. Uh, and, and, and Jamie's he, been doing that for. I, uh, knowing him, he's been doing that for like long before Dalio figured it he, out. He's been radically transparent with his own critique of things I've said over the years. That's, so, yes, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I was thinking about that. I'm at aware dinner of that. Davos. I'm I was aware thinking of that. about that. And I, it's helpful. I, is it not helpful? What, was it not helpful? It's, it's helpful a, for it's me. It's a learning experience for me <laughs> always. Hey Jeff, real quick. Um, it's also, one, it, one of the his questions though that I just want to mention is remarkable too. Always. I'm sorry, Andrew. I was going to say one of the questions, though, that is being asked this morning is uh, succession planning at that company, what J.P. Morgan looks like, uh, you know, uh, in an era after Jamie Dimon. Uh, one of the one of the critiques has been that actually you talked about the diaspora uh, of people all over Wall Street uh, because that, that have worked under him. Um, the question is, who do you think ultimately would take over that company and, and what would it look like? I think Gordon Smith's all dressed up, ready to go. But you look at Marion Lake, as you talked about earlier, and Jennifer uh, 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 Pepsi, she's ready to the current CFO. He's, in fact, you look at this management committee, half of the management committee are women. Where in finance do you see that? It's remarkable. But I think Gordon Smith, uh, or Dan Pinto, but Gordon Smith is dressed up, ready. In, in the near term, longer term, Marion Lake, I think a lot of people would put their bets on her. She's a prior CFO, now head of uh, consumer lending. But it's just incredible, the cross-training in here.